In this video, I'm going to walk through using the static IP feature in Windows Azure. So I'm just going to create a new virtual network and I'm just going to call this Savile Tech Virtual Network. I'm not going to worry about any site to site or point to site or any DNS servers right now. I'm going to use the standard namespace. But what I advise is you want separate subnets that you're going to put your static IP virtual machines into. So I'm going to create a static subnet. And I'm going to do that one dot. And I'll just use 24 bits. And then I'm going to add a dynamic subnet. So the machines that don't require a static IP, I'm going to stick in that dynamic subnet. So it's going to be 10.0.2.0. And again, 24. And I can go ahead and create that. I'm now going to go ahead and create a new cloud service because I can't use an existing cloud service with the virtual network. Any cloud service that already existed with resources would not be able to leverage it. So I'm going to go and create a new cloud service. I'm just going to call this Savile Tech Cloud Service. And I'll put that into my same affinity group, which is my East US. So now I've got that. So now I can actually go and create a virtual machine from the gallery. I'll go 2012 bar 2. Now I could do all of this from PowerShell. I'm just going to show it from the GUI originally, but the static IP configuration I do have to do from PowerShell. You need the latest version of PowerShell because um, these were just added. So it's basically beginning of March 2014, add to that capability. So I'm going to select my new cloud service. I can then select my virtual network and I want to use my static subnet. I can't change this once it's created. I've got my default portal storage account. Don't need an availability set. I'll use the VM agent, which is again a new feature that we've just got that is going to allow extra providers to bring benefits such as BG info and resetting passwords and more in the future. So I'm going to let that do. So I'm going to go and create that VM. And what this is going to do by default is use a dynamic IP. So what we'll see is it'll probably get an IP address of 10.0.1.4 because obviously the first and last IP address in the subnet always reserved for the network name and the broadcast, then Windows Azure always steals the first three IP addresses from every subnet for its own purposes. So this will actually go and get an IP address dynamically assigned. And once that's done, what we'll actually do is we'll deprovision the VM, I it's removed from the fabric, and then I'll give it a static IP address. So I'm gonna let that finish. So that virtual machine is now created. And if I scroll down, I can go and see it got an internal IP address of 10.0.1.4. Remember, this was assigned automatically by Windows Azure based on the virtual subnet it was part of, which was the 10.0.1. And remember, the first IP address is the network name. The next three are reserved by Azure. So it got the next one available, which was .4. If I go and actually connect to that virtual machine, I'll see it's configured to use DHCP. So it automatically gives me an RDP file that I can actually go and edit that, change the resolution I want, and then actually connect in. So I'm now connected to that virtual machine. If I go and look at that networking config, what we'll actually see is change adapter settings, because so I can never do static IP within the actual VM. I can never tell it as part of its TCP IP config to use a static IP config. It always has to be set to obtain an IP address automatically. But what I'm going to do in Azure is effectively do like a DHCP reservation. I'm going to tell Azure, always give this VM this specific IP address. Because normally, and what I actually show now, I'll just disconnect from this. If I now go and do a shutdown, what this actually does, it was warning me just then, it basically deprovisions this virtual machine from the Windows Azure fabric. It means I stopped paying for it, but it means it will lose that IP address. And if another VM came along, it might take that IP, and so I wouldn't be able to get the same one again. 
Now, if I shut it down from within the VM, it would stay provisioned on the fabric, and I would guarantee I could keep the IP address. But I don't want that. I want to be able to actually deprovision it, stop paying for it, and still keep the IP address I want. So that VM is now shut down. So I'm now going to jump over to PowerShell. And what I can do here is, I've already connected to my Azure subscription using PowerShell. And I can actually just show you those commands quickly. So if I, if you've never done this before, so you import the Windows Azure module, after you've installed it, obviously. And then if you run this get Azure publish settings file, that will actually let you sign in. It will download the actual publishing settings file you need to actually connect from PowerShell. Once you have the file, you just import it using this command. You can get a list of your subscriptions, your storage accounts, and then you just set a default subscription and storage account you wanna use in the next set of commands. So I've done all that already. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna check, hey, is a certain IP address available? So I could check for the 1.4, Remember, I deprovisioned that virtual machine. But it's actually maybe it's still not gone through yet. Things haven't updated. It's actually saying no, it's not available. And it starts to give you a list of other ones that I could use. What about 1.10? So let's see if this IP address is available. And then that's saying true, I can use that. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to assign my virtual machine. So it's called static IP test and it's as part of my Savile Tech cloud service, I'm gonna assign that into this variable. So I'm now basically just, what is that VM into an object? Now this command sets the static IP of the VM to an IP address, I'm gonna use 1.10. And I have to tell it to update the Azure virtual machine. So I'm gonna run that command. And then that's actually going to make that change in the Azure fabric, telling it, hey, always give it this particular IP address. And then once that's complete, I can then go and do a check and say, well, did that change actually take effect? I can do a get Azure static VNet IP. So that succeeded. I can go and check. Yep, there's that IP address is assigned to it. So now what I can do is I'm going to start it again. Yep, start the VM. So it's gonna go through and now restart this virtual machine. So now it's started, and now notice the IP address. It's actually showing me that new IP address that I assigned to it. So now if I connect to it again, I'll still see it's using DHCP. Nothing has changed inside the VM. It's just the Azure Fabric now knows to always give it that specific IP address. So I'm now connected to it. If within the VM, I go and, for example, run a command, I just do IP config, I see it gets the 1.10, but it is still configured with that automatically assigned the IP address. So don't think it's not working. It will A VM in Azure will always be configured. You can never say, use the following. It's always gonna be obtained an IP address automatically. But essentially I've created that reservation within Azure. You notice I always have this BG info. This is because I've got the VM agent deployed. And as part of the VM agent, there's a time of speaking. <laughs> there's two extensions. There's the BG info and there's basically I can reset passwords. So I can set some just generic passwords for things. So that's now available. And that's actually running in this VM. So you can always go and see that. So if you go and look on a machine, you'll actually see the packages. So packages is, for example, BG info that's used. And then also, oh, there we go. You have the Windows Azure, you have the agent. So just a couple of little things there, but that's how easy it is to set a static IP address. Again, keep a different virtual subnet for your statics to your dynamics, and that really is all there is to it. And now I can deprovision, it will always keep that same IP address. So great for domain controllers, great for DNS servers, for example, that want to run in Azure. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for your attention. Bye.